Am I wrong for banning my mother-in-law out of my house after she hung a picture of my husband's ex on the wall? My husband, 30, and I, 31, have just bought our first house together. We're loving it and we're excited to decorate it together. Unfortunately, my husband travels a lot for work and we've already had new furniture orders arrive, but I couldn't do it all myself. My mother-in-law offered to help and I agreed. Yesterday, I got back from work at 8 and was shocked to see one of the walls was full of framed pictures that my mother-in-law put there. That is not the main problem because these pictures were from his childhood, graduation, and birthdays. But then I saw the biggest framed picture of them all and it is of him and his ex on their wedding day. Context. Mother-in-law adores my husband's ex. She brings her up all the time and reminisces about the past years with her. Not only that, but she includes her in events and holidays which cause issues between us. I lashed out on my mother-in-law asking her why the hell that picture is on the wall and how she thought it was an appropriate thing to do. I told her to take it down in that instance, but she got defensive and said, this is part of Derek's life and you cannot erase it. Yes, you can. Then went on about how many hours she spent working on this wall and how I should be a little bit more appreciative. I lost my cool and flipped out on her. I took a chair and removed the picture. I told her to take the picture and leave, but she tried to say it wasn't just the ex in the picture, but my husband as well. But I told her I'd throw it out if she doesn't leave. She left, but started texting me saying that I'm jealous, bitter, overbearing, and controlling. I responded telling her she disrespected me in my own home by what she did and proceeded to ban her from my house. She called my husband and forwarded a screenshot of the ban. He called me and we talked. Then he said his mom ought to know better, but she didn't, and I was right to be angry, but banning her from the house was an overreaction, like a crazy overreaction. He tried to get me to call her and cancel the ban, but I refused. He then ranted about how unfair I was being to make such a decision when it's our house and not just mine. Conversation got nowhere, and now I'm waiting for him to get home to talk. My in-laws are upset with me saying I went overboard with this reaction and urged me to let my mother-in-law back in the house and drop this whole thing like it never happened. So am I wrong for banning her? My husband signed up for my sister's only friends. Should I divorce him? Disclaimer, not my story time is done me on Instagram. My husband and I have a really toxic relationship. When he and I first started dating, I was extremely jealous. I would instigate fights almost every single day. Now that we're married, I'm definitely less jealous, but he's always been jealous throughout our relationship. He tries to control everything I do, down to the way I dress and even the people I can or cannot hang out with. He even insisted that I quit my job, which I did. He's invested a lot in Tesla and crypto, so he makes a lot of money without having to leave the house, which yes, is totally amazing, but that means he and I are together Together all the time and with his jealousy sometimes I just can't stand him I've tried to help him with his jealousy because I used to be in that place and when I try to talk to him about it he just gets mad at me whenever he sees that I post something on Instagram he gets angry he says that I'm looking for attention which of course I am but not from guys everyone posts on social media because they want to show off their life a little on my sister we're identical twins and we're really really close unfortunately my sister got laid off from her job last year that's when she decided to start her only friends I support her in everything she wants to do she's actually making really good money from it so she's really happy about it a few days ago I got on my husband's phone to look for something when I see my sister's pictures part two is up my husband signed up for my sister's only friend should i divorce him disclaimer is not my story time is on instagram a few days ago i got on my husband's phone to transfer some money from his account to mine when i started looking for his banking app i noticed something else on his screen i had never seen this before so i clicked on it and as soon as i opened it i see my sister's pictures and i knew it was her only friends right away by the way i had never told my husband that my sister had an only friends she wouldn't even post about it on her social media so the fact that he found it makes me believe that he had my phone bugged or something but here's the thing he was using a different name for his account so it was likely that my sister did not know it was him from there i I could see that he was following a bunch of other girls and when i went to their messages he had paid over hundreds of dollars every single day to all of these girls can you imagine how much money that is my husband came into the room and saw me on his phone of course he didn't freak out because he never thought that i would find it but i confronted him right away but he didn't even flinch he said he had every right to go on OnlyFans because it was the same thing as going to any website i told him to at least unfollow my sister and he said that he wouldn't he said he loved it because it was like watching me do naughty things then he said isn't this better than cheating on you i was flabbergasted part three is up my husband signed up for my sister's only friends. Should I divorce him? Disclaimer is not my story time. It's on me on Instagram. That's when he told me that it was better than him cheating on me. And I was shocked. I couldn't think of anything else to say, so I threatened him. I told him that if he didn't stop following my sister, that I would start my own only friends account. Like I said, he's really jealous. So he went berserk. He ripped my phone out of my hand and threw it against the wall. Then he told me that the only reason he asked me to quit my job was so that I wouldn't be around other men. By the way, I used to be a personal trainer. And most of the time, I would only train women. I told him that my sister and I wouldn't be comfortable with him looking at our only friends. It was so disturbing. Oh, and I also told him that he needed to stop controlling me and that I could buy my own phone with my own money and start my own account. Then he came to his senses and started to apologize. And I also told him that I was suspecting that he bugged my phone and that he was receiving my messages because there was no other way he could have found out about my sister's account. Then he calmed down and explained things to me. He said that he had bugged my phone a few months ago because I was posting too much on Instagram and it was bothering him. So basically, he has access to my DMs and all my text messages. He promised to stop doing that and that he would buy me a new phone. And that that's how he found out about my sister's only friends. He said he only signed up out of curiosity. And that he only wanted to see a few pictures and then delete it. But the more he kept looking at her pictures, the more he would think of me. And that it turned him on. And in front of me, he deactivated 
deactivated his account and deleted everything. He promised me that he would never do that again. Of course, I haven't forgiven him though. I haven't even spoken to him in days, but every time he sees me, he tries to kiss me and hug me. And when I push him away, he tries even harder. Honestly, I think he likes it. I do believe that he's secretly addicted to drama and that he thrives on it. I'm planning on never telling my sister about it. I don't think she'd feel comfortable around him ever again. I mean, I don't feel comfortable around him right now. I'm so confused and I don't know if I should leave him or not. He's so controlling all the time. What should I do? The most beautiful diamond You've got the most beautiful diamond's eyes I've ever seen in my whole life The skyline is jealous, I'm looking at you, how you shine Story time about how my best friend's dad tried to assault me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. I'm now 24, but 10 years ago, a new girl moved into our town. Her and I quickly became best friends in school. She would always come over to my house and have dinner with me and my parents. My parents really grew to love her because she was so polite and really cared about me. The only thing was that she never wanted me to go over to her house. At first, I thought it might be because she was embarrassed of her house or something. And eventually I asked her and she told me that her dad was abusive towards her mom and that that was the reason why she didn't want me to come over. I felt terrible that she had to live like that, so I expressed to my mom that I was really concerned about her. So my mom actually asked my best friend if she wanted to come live with us for a little bit. Let's call my best friend Sarah. Sarah said no because she wanted to be with her mom. But my mom really wanted to help Sarah and her mom. My mom was in an abusive relationship herself when she was younger, so she understood what Sarah and her mom were going through. My mom decided to invite Sarah's mom over for dinner. That's when my mom asked her about their living situation, and Sarah's mom confessed that it was pretty bad. My mom suggested that she should try to get a divorce, and a few weeks later, she filed for divorce. We were all so happy because this meant things would get better for Sarah and her mom. And things did get better. Her dad moved out to his own apartment, and a few weeks later, he had a new girlfriend. I was able to stay over at Sarah's house, and it was really fun. One of the times that I was with Sarah at her house, her dad showed up. But he started making me feel really uncomfortable. He told Sarah that I was the prettiest friend she'd ever had. I could see him staring at me. After he left, Sarah apologized. I went home and tried not to think about it. A few days later, I was walking home when Sarah's dad pulled up next to me. Part two is up. Part two of how my best friend's dad tried to assault me. Disclaim, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. One day that I was at Sarah's house, I decided to walk home instead of calling my mom to pick me up. As I was walking home, Sarah's dad pulls up next to me. At this point, I still hadn't forgotten what he had said about me, and I still felt really uncomfortable. He asked me if I needed a ride, and I politely said no. Then he started to laugh and asked me if I was scared of him. Of course I said no, but the truth is that I was. And he said, well, then get in the car if you're not scared of me. And I did. As we got closer to my house, he put his hand on my lap. He asked me if I had a boyfriend, and I pushed his hand away. Then he asked me why I was being so rude. I told him that he made me feel uncomfortable and I just wanted to get out of the car and walk the rest of the way home. He said no because it would be dangerous for me to be by myself walking at night. He put his hand back on my lap and told me that I was really sturdy. That's when he grabbed my hand and tried to put it on his lap. Of course, I pulled my hand away really quick. Then he pulled over really fast and tried to kiss me. I was so beyond disgusted. I just started yelling. And this really took him by surprise because he must have thought that I was just going to let him. While I was yelling at the top of my lungs, I managed to unlock the car and open the door. I basically threw myself on the ground and he started yelling at me, telling me to shut up. He tried to pull me back into the car, but at this point I was laying on the ground, so he had to pick up dead weight. He grabbed my foot and started pulling me back towards the car, but I started kicking him. He told me that I was overreacting and that he was just trying to be friendly. Luckily, a few of the neighbors heard me screaming because I was right in front of their house. They came outside and ran towards me because they saw me struggling with him. That's when the woman said that she was going to call the cops. He tried to tell the lady that I was overreacting and that he had only leaned over to put the seatbelt on, but I took it the wrong way. I told her that he tried to kiss me and she started calling the cops. That's when he drove away. I literally could not believe what had just happened. Finally, the cops arrived and so did my mom. I told them everything that happened and I even told them that he had made a comment about me in Sarah's house a few days before that. They quickly started looking for his car and found him at a parking lot. They arrested him and he spent two nights in jail. His girlfriend then went to bail him out. She told the cops that he was with her and that I was just lying and that I made everything up. She even went as far as to tell the police that I had been hitting on him and that she had been a witness to it. She would even call my house at 2 in the morning and hang up. I even saw her car near my house and by my school, which means she was following me. Part 3 is up.
Part three of how my best friend's dad tried to assault me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. I called the police to tell him that his girlfriend was following me. That's when the cops said that I could probably get a restraining order against him and his girlfriend. Sarah and her mom came over to our house after they heard what happened. Of course, they felt really bad, but they weren't surprised. Sarah told me that that's why she never wanted me to come over because her dad had commented things about her friends before. Worst of all is that they couldn't keep him in jail for what he did to me, but a few months later he was finally put into prison because of something else he did. Apparently he had tried to steal a car or something. Remember the crazy girlfriend I told you Sarah's dad had? She kept following me for a long time. She would even show up to my school asking me if I wanted a ride home. Eventually I was able to get a restraining order against her, but she was really scary. A few years ago she tried to follow me on Instagram. I had to block and report her. I mean, what kind of woman would fight for a man like that? The good news is, Sarah and I are still good friends to this day. We even went to college together and now have steady boyfriends. Even Sarah's mom remarried and she's really happy with her husband. I look back at what happened as a learning experience, but to be honest, if he ever gets out of prison, I'm scared. Shout out to my follower Remy for always supporting me and watching my lives. If you want a shout out, watch my lives to get picked. Bye! Story time about why you should never, ever, ever do drugs. So a little background information. In my town on the 15th of June this year, two girls got kidnapped in my hometown. So I kind of knew these two girls. I mean, they went to my school, but that was really it. Because low-key, I didn't want to be friends with them and I kind of hated them. They were in seventh grade, I was in eighth grade, so they were probably like a year younger than me. Anyway, so it was a Wednesday and the last time they had been seen was at 8 p.m. with a 30-year-old man. They were supposedly doing drugs outside of a McDonald's. Well, I guess this man saw that they had been doing drugs and he wanted some. Before that, I guess he kind of eased into the question because he was like talking to them, getting to know them. And I guess he thought he had a really good shot at getting some drugs. But when he asked, they said no. So then he asked a few more times and they finally gave them to him. But whenever they got closer, he grabbed both of them, put him in his van and drove off. And he hid them in his house. Like for part two. Part two of why you should never, ever, ever do drugs. So like I said, he asked for them again and finally the girls decided to give him some. But when they got closer, he grabbed both of them and shoved them in his van, drove off. Well, he ended up driving to his house and decided to hide them there. Well, one of the girl's aunts posted something on Facebook saying that both of them were missing. And soon the news made an article that literally said drug addict and her friend gets kidnapped. Um... They went missing for like six days and on the 22nd of June they were found but now they won't stop bragging about how fun it was to get kidnapped. And that is why still to this day I absolutely despise these girls. Am I the asshole for frightening a snooping neighbor by opening my door and causing her to fall? I, 37 female, live in a pet friendly no breed restriction apartment building. It's important to mention I live in a city with a significant crime rate. I live on the third floor and I don't share a landing with any of my neighbors and anyone coming up to the third floor is coming there for me. We don't have a secure gate or front door to the building. I have a 40 pound dog, not aggressive in the slightest. Her one guarding tendency is to bark at the door if she hears anyone outside. She's part hunting hound, so she has a big vocal howl bark. This is really comforting because sometimes people will come up to my landing who have no business being there and my dog will actually scare them away. I have an asshole for frightening a snooping neighbor by opening my door and causing her to fall. Downstairs neighbor 45 to 50 female has been on my landing several times. Sometimes she brings mail, but others she's just lurking. She once even moved my mat. I walk my dog, she asks where my other aggressive dog is. Each time I tell her I only have one dog and that she sounds aggressive at the door. Last week, my property manager emailed me about reports that I may have two dogs. I wonder where they got that report. Today from the people, I saw her bending in front of my door but couldn't tell what she was doing. I swung it open and my dog was standing beside me loudly barking. She fell on her ass because she was looking at the mat again. I said, see, just one dog like I told you. I offered to help her up, but she called me an a-hole and a b-word and said the building was better before I moved in. Am I the asshole for telling my fiancé to get her insecurities in check and grow up after she humiliated my coworker? Recently, I, 25 male, got engaged to my amazing fiancé, 24 Amy. I was the happiest I'd ever been when Amy said yes and was nothing but excited for our wedding. When planning, we both agreed to invite our coworkers. As I checked off the list, Amy spoke up and said that everyone can come except for Tally. Tally is one of my closest friends, so this surprised me. She's met her multiple times and there never seemed to be an issue. When I asked why, she said she doesn't like her and finds her relationship uncomfortable. She said she thinks Tally is the type of person to sway taken men and be the center of attention. After more talking to see where she got this idea, it turned out that this was based on nothing but Tally's looks. Am I the asshole for telling my fiancé to get her insecurities in check and grow up after she humiliated my coworker? Recently, I, 25 male, got engaged to my amazing fiancé, 24 Amy. I was the happiest I'd ever been when Amy said yes and was nothing but excited for our wedding. When planning, we both agreed to invite our coworkers. 
As I checked off the list, Amy spoke up and said that everyone can come except for Tally. Tally is one of my closest friends, so this surprised me. She's met her multiple times and there never seemed to be an issue. When I asked why, she said she doesn't like her and finds her relationship uncomfortable. She said she thinks Tally is the type of person to sway taken men and be the center of attention. After more talking to see where she got this idea, it turned out that this was based on nothing but Tally's looks. Tender touch, drum glove, staying up, just talk to you. You stayed in touch, two continents, through all us. Seems every night, yeah, all the time I'm calling out to you. Seems every time I take a drink, I'm reaching out. My boyfriend went on a vacation with his ex behind my back. Should I break up with him? Disclaimer, I look extremely tired because I've been filming for seven hours. I'm not sad, don't worry. The story time was sent to me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I have been together for six months only. Here's the thing, we never bring up our exes, like ever. From my perspective, I thought we had a really healthy relationship. We're both really into fitness, would work out together every single day, and we made time to cook together every single day. He asked me to move in with him two months after we started dating, but I said no. I explained to him that I just wasn't ready for that, and he got really upset. That's when things started changing. He began making up excuses about not being able to hang out with me, and sometimes he wouldn't even show up to our gym dates and i guess one of the mistakes that i made was giving him a space a few days later he calls me and tells me that he's in boston for a work trip he didn't even tell me he was going on a trip i just said okay then i tracked his location on my phone and it turns out he's in the bahamas he forgot that i could track his location i started investigating and you'll never guess what i found part two is that my boyfriend went on vacation with his ex behind my back should i break up with him this claim is not my story time was on instagram also i'm just really tired from filming i'm not sad i promise after checking his location and seeing that he was actually in the bahamas and not boston where he told me he was going I started doing some investigating on instagram i scanned his instagram Instagram for people that he tagged. I finally came across his ex's profile. No, I had never done this before just because I didn't care about his ex. Like I said in part one, we never talked about our exes. Fortunately, her account was set to private, so I couldn't see her pictures or stories. But I did see on her bio that she was currently in the Bahamas. From his location, I could see what hotel he was staying at. So I called the hotel and asked for his room number. And they put me through, my boyfriend answered the phone. And the first words out of his mouth were, how did you find me here? I told him I could see his location and that he must have forgotten. That's when he came up with his lie. His boss asked him to go to the Bahamas for emergency business. And that he didn't have time to call me and tell me about it. In the background, I could hear that somebody opened the door and I heard a woman's voice. He instantly hung up on me. So I called his phone, but he wouldn't answer. In fact, he turned his phone off. It wasn't until four days later that he actually showed up to my apartment apologizing. He said his phone broke and that he couldn't get one while he was in the Bahamas. Part three is up. My boyfriend went on vacation with his ex behind my back. Should I break up with him? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. After four days of not hearing from my stupid boyfriend who was in the Bahamas, finally showed up to my apartment to apologize. I told him not to even bother because I knew that he was with his ex. Then he said, you're right. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Then he came up with this whole story. He clearly had four days to think about it. He told me that his ex-girlfriend's boyfriend died and that she was in need of his help. She asked him to go to the Bahamas to spread her boyfriend's ashes. And of course, being the gentleman that he is, he said, yeah. And that the only reason he didn't tell me was because he didn't want me to get jealous. So I asked him to confirm his story. I told him to call his ex and put her on speaker. And he refused. He said that I was being toxic and that doing that to his poor ex would bring up all the feelings she had from her boyfriend's death. And that she was grieving and I needed to respect her space. Gaslighting much? I told him I wouldn't believe him and then I kicked him out. He told me I was being so insensitive towards him. So I asked his ex on Instagram if the whole story was true. She hasn't opened the message and I'm still waiting for her to reply. It's been a few days since that happened and my boyfriend keeps coming back to my apartment with flowers and champagne. He keeps apologizing and asking me not to break up with him. I know you're all thinking I should just leave him, but I really, really love him. And maybe the story is true. They shouldn't have lied. I can't confirm his story. What should I do? My boyfriend thinks I'm disgusting for having periods and refuses to touch me or even have sexy time. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I have only been dating for three months. We met on a dating app. He works in financing and I own my own business. He's 28 and I'm 22, but he is so not mature. When we first met, he came across as a really intelligent guy. After six dates, he asked me if I wanted to be his girlfriend and I said yes. I did feel like he was rushing into it a little bit, but I decided to take the risk. A few days after he asked me to be his girlfriend, I mentioned to him that I was gonna get off the pill. I was having a lot of hormonal problems and the pill was probably causing it. And I knew that this was gonna make my periods really heavy again. Well, when I said this to him, he said, wow, that's disgusting. Then he said, my ex never had periods because she was always on the pill. Um, isn't that impossible? He was just lying to make me feel bad. And I literally sat there in the restaurant explaining to him why periods happen and why they are important. By the end of the conversation, he said it was still gross and that he wouldn't want to touch me when I was on it in case he got blood on him. Then he brought up his ex again. He said that she was always so clean. I got up from the table and I walked away. Part two is up. 
My boyfriend told me I'm disgusting for getting my period and he refuses to touch me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It's going to be on Instagram. The following day, he called me and asked me if I still had my period. I told him no and he said, okay, then I can come over. When he came over to my apartment, I asked him what was his problem with periods. He told me that it was disgusting and that women should try to get rid of them. Then he started insisting on me taking the pill again so that I could stop having periods. I told him he had no right over my body and that I would do whatever I wanted. He ended up going home and we didn't speak for a few days. He finally calls me and tells me that he's sorry for calling me disgusting. <sighs> but this time I actually had my period. So when he came over, I wanted to test him. I kissed him and told him that I wanted to do it. Then he said, okay. I told him I had to go to the bathroom to remove my pad. Then he said, are you for real? That's so gross. Why would you invite me over knowing that you have your period? Then he said that he wouldn't come near me with a 10 foot pole. Yeah, this 28 year old man said that. Then he told me that I probably smell really bad down there and that I should probably go take a shower right away. I didn't even know what to say to him. I opened my front door and I stood there and he left. An hour later, he posts on his story that he's at a club with his friends. Part three is up. Story time with on Instagram. He posted a story that he was at a club. I decided to give him the benefit of the doubt. So I didn't ask him anything. A few hours later, I check his story again and he's partying with all these random girls at the club. I asked him who they were and he said they were just girls that he met at the club. I was so angry, I just turned off my phone. At two in the morning, he shows up to my apartment drunk. He actually apologized, but ended up falling asleep on my couch. The next day, I thanked him for apologizing and he said, what apology? I said, you came over last night and apologized. He said, no, I didn't. I would never have done that. I still think your period are gross. I started to cry and he told me that I was overreacting. For the past three months, it's been like this. Every time I'm on my period, he refuses to even hang out with me. I told him a few weeks ago that I needed him to change because I needed his support when I had my period. He told me that he just couldn't do it. So I took to Instagram and got in contact with his ex. And I asked her if it was really true that she never got periods. She told me no, that it wasn't true and that he was just disgusted with periods in general. She told me that I shouldn't take it personally and that he also made her life a living hell whenever she got her period. Then she told me that he cheated on her several times when she had her period. Apparently it was just like a hall pass for him. So now I'm thinking about breaking up with him. When I'm not on my periods, we have a great time. But I want someone who will love me and support me no matter what. What should I do? Story time about how my creepy uncle flirts with me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. I come from a really big family. My mom has five sisters and one brother, and my dad has four brothers and sisters. All of them have their own kids, so I have a lot of cousins. And this means we have a lot of family get-togethers. Every single weekend, someone is hosting a party. We all get together and eat, and it's actually a really nice time. But there's always that one creepy uncle. In my case, it's my mom's brother. He's 46 year old and has never married, but he's a bachelor. He's got money, so he basically has a bunch of sugar babies. Whenever my family tells him that he needs to get married, he says he'll never get married to anybody. He thinks women only exist for the pleasure of men. When I turned 16, I noticed that he would stare at me a lot. At first, it was just staring. Every now and again, he never did anything really creepy then, but just the staring was enough for me. I never told my mom about it then, not until I turned 18. This is when he started making comments like, wow, you're growing into your body, or wow, you got great hips. He would make comments about how I was growing up, like, Ew. He even told my dad that he needed to keep me away from guys because I was growing up really quickly. And because of my curves, men would think that I was a woman. This is when I finally told my mom that he was making me super uncomfortable. She thought it was funny at first. So I avoided him at all costs. Part two. Story time about how my creepy uncle flirts with me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It's going to be on Instagram. When I told my mom that he was making me super uncomfortable, she laughed it off. She thought it was funny. She said, oh, you know how he is. So from that point on, I basically avoided my uncle every time we were at a family event. When I turned 20, this is when things got even worse. He would ask me things like if I was a virgin or if I had a boyfriend, if I had ever been on dates. And one time he even told me that he would get very jealous if I ended up bringing a guy to one of our family events. One time he complimented me on the dress that I was wearing. So after that, I only wore baggy clothes to family events. The fact that I had to change the way that I dress so that he could control himself makes me sick. I finally told my mom again that my uncle was always bothering me. That's when she told me that the world is filled with men like him and that all I needed to do was just ignore him. So I told my dad everything. My dad took it a little more seriously and told my uncle that he needed to stop making comments. My uncle just laughed. Part three is up. Story time about how my creepy uncle flirts with me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. I finally told my dad and he told my uncle to stop making comments. My uncle just laughed and told my dad that he was overreacting and that all he said to me was that I was a pretty girl. What a liar. In part one and two, I told you guys that it was getting worse, but here's where it actually gets even worse. Like I said, I have a really big family, so my cousins are growing up too. One of them just turned 13 and my uncle cannot stop staring at her. She's maturing a lot quicker than most 13 year olds. He's already staring at her. So here's what I did. At the next family event, I sat right next to him. Every time he would stare at one of my cousins or try to make a comment at me, I called him out for it in front of everybody. I even recorded the things that he said. The fact that I even have to do this at a family event makes me sick. Instead of enjoying my time with my family, I have to sit next to my creepy uncle policing him. Anyway, it's totally worth it though. I'm making sure that my cousins don't feel uncomfortable. After I had enough recordings of him saying nasty things at the next family event i showed it to my grandma i basically played it for the entire family my grandma told him that he couldn't come to any more events if he was going to behave that way and of course he apologized to everyone right away but not to me he apologized to my dad after his half-ass apology he was let back into family events i don't think that's enough punishment give me some ideas because i think i deserve justice creepy uncle
Am I an asshole for lying to my boyfriend about being pregnant just to keep him in a relationship? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I have been together for almost five years. Granted, we did break up throughout those five years. With all the breakups, we've actually been together for about three years. I've never considered myself an obsessive person, but when it comes to him, something just takes over me. Here's some of the reasons why we broke up. At first, he didn't want to be in a relationship, even though I begged him, which I know was so dumb of me. So he eventually broke up with me and told me that he didn't want anything serious. But he kept on calling me every single week because he wanted the dirty instead i started going out on other dates and i would flaunt it all over my social media and this worked it made him super jealous and he came right back to me he called me up one day and told me that he wanted me back the second time we broke up i caught him talking to some girls on facebook when i confronted him he broke up with me he told me i was too nosy and that he needed to live his life as a single man we finally got back together i told him that it was for marriage he said yes that he would eventually ask me to marry him a few months ago he started acting really cold towards me he would barely call me and when we were together he would never touch me that's when i started digging in his phone and i found that he was talking to some girls on Instagram but I knew that if I confronted him I would risk him breaking up with me again so I did the next logical thing I waited until I saw him again and I told him that I was pregnant I even started to cry to make him feel like I was happy his face turned completely white and he asked me if I was sure he said yes aren't you happy baby part two is up Am I the asshole for lying to my boyfriend about being pregnant just so that I could keep him in a relationship? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. That's when he started to cry. Remember, I don't even have a pregnancy test to show or anything. But surprisingly, he didn't ask for proof of my pregnancy. He just kept crying on the couch. I asked him if he was happy, but clearly he was not. But he lied and said, yeah, of course I'm happy. Seeing how vulnerable he was, I took advantage of the situation and I brought up marriage. I told him we should get engaged soon so that we could tell his family. Then he said, are you sure you want to get married? And I said, of course we're gonna have a baby then he sat there for a minute and thought about it finally he got down on one knee and said do you want to marry me i said yes and this time i cried for real all my dreams were coming true after that things started moving really fast we invited both our families to my apartment and we hosted a dinner we broke the news to them that i was pregnant again nobody asked for proof of the pregnancy though our families were so happy and excited that very same night he gave me a beautiful engagement ring his mom even started planning the baby shower let me remind you i'm actually not pregnant so i had to come up with a plan You'll never guess what I did. Part three is up. This is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. It was sending me on Instagram. His mom started planning the baby shower and there was no turning back. Even my mom got involved in the planning of the baby shower. So like I said, I'm really not pregnant at this point. So I started trying to get pregnant, but my damn boyfriend just wouldn't touch me. I decided to check his phone again and saw that he was still talking to some girls on Instagram. So I decided to confront him at this point. I mean, we are engaged and I'm supposedly pregnant with his baby. I confronted him and he just got angry at me. He said that if he was going to marry me and have a baby with me, he would need to talk to other girls and that that was not a negotiation for him. Then he confessed that he was seeing two other girls on the side and that there was no way he was going to stop seeing them and that I couldn't do anything about it. But his confession actually made me fall out of love with him now i'm planning to break up with him but what do i do about the fake pregnancy i do want to make him pay for what he said to me but i don't want to hurt our families either should i just come clean what should i do story time about how my boyfriend faked his own death so that he wouldn't have to break up with me his mom called me to tell me that he was dead disclaimers did not my story time was sending me on instagram my boyfriend and i had been dating for three years our relationship was really only based on attraction i have to admit but the last year we started getting a little bit more serious and that's when we started talking about marriage by the way, he was the one that brought up marriage. He asked me if I could see myself getting married to him and I said yes. Now here's the thing, I am way out of his league. Like way, way, way out of his league. I'm a 10, he's probably like a six. Here's my theory, if you date a guy that's not as good looking as you, he probably won't cheat on you and will consider himself lucky to be with you. So that was my reason for being in a relationship with him. He made me feel safe and I knew that he probably wouldn't cheat on me and he felt lucky to be with me because I'm really hot. Eventually he asked me to move in and I said yes. But after a few weeks, he started acting really strange. He constantly complained about having headaches and for some reason would always have his mom over at our place. Part two is up. Story time about how my boyfriend faked his own death to not have to break up with me and even got his mom to call me to tell me that he was dead. Disclaimer, this is not my story time, it's on Instagram. After we moved in together, that's when everything changed. He always complained about having headaches and would always bring his mom over like every single day. At first, this annoyed me because all I really wanted was some privacy with my boyfriend, but then I kind of just learned to deal with it. And here's when things get really crazy. After exactly one month of living together, he disappeared. One morning, he left to work and simply did not come back. I kept calling his phone, but no answer. I even called his mom and asked him what was up and she told me that she didn't know where he was. Finally, after two days of calling his phone, I decided to go over to his mom's house. I asked her if he'd been home and she told me that she hadn't seen him in three days. But her behavior was super strange. She got really nervous and tried to close the door behind her. I asked her who was inside the house and she said nobody. But I could hear someone making noise. Then she basically kicked me out. She told me I needed to leave really quickly because she had to go out. So of course, I went back to my apartment. Two hours later, she calls me to tell me that he's dead. I asked her where he was. She told me that he didn't know and that she didn't know how he died. She asked me not to call her again because it was too painful. Part three is... 
Story time about how my boyfriend faked his own death so that he wouldn't have to break up with me and got his mom to tell me that he was dead. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. After she told me on the phone that my boyfriend was dead, I had no choice but to believe her. I was so sad and depressed. Sitting in the apartment that I share with my dead boyfriend, I called my parents and told them I was coming home. I spent the next four days with my parents and eventually went back to my apartment. My plan was to get all of his stuff and give it to his mom. I show up to her house with the boxes and knock on the door. She opens the door with a huge smile on her face. And as soon as she realizes it's me, she stops smiling. I asked her if she was okay and she said that everything was fine. She asked me what I wanted in a really rude tone and I said I'm just bringing some of your son's stuff. She asked me to leave it outside and then close the door. I knocked on the door again and she did not open the door. A few days later I go to the mall and guess who I see walking around? My dead boyfriend? I run up to him and ask him what happened. That's when he confessed that he just didn't know how to break up with me and he thought that the best way to do it was just to pretend that he was dead and he also confessed that he met someone. Here I'm thinking I'm way too hot for him to cheat on me. Yeah right. It's been a few months now and he's hitting me up again because he broke up with the other girl should i take him back should i break up with my boyfriend for fat shaming me my boyfriend and i started dating two years ago at the beginning of our relationship i was weighing 130 pounds so back then he never had a problem with my weight in fact he used to praise me and tell me that he loved my body he always would tell me that my curves were sexy and i would sometimes tell him that i wanted to lose weight but he would always say no in fact a few months after we started dating i went on a diet i lost about five pounds in two weeks and he told me that i needed to stop he told me he liked my womanly body so i stopped dieting at first i was happy that he loved my body so much but at the same same time I didn't feel healthy which is why I started the diet in the first place after I stopped the diet I still kept on eating healthy with the exception that every now and then we would have pizza or fast food but I still tried to keep it to a minimum so my boyfriend is actually in the Marines and he had to go away for a few months this sent me into a depression because I missed him so much and because of that I started eating a lot I would ask my mom to cook me my favorite meals and I would basically just eat all day at the time I also didn't have a job so that was making me depressed as well so I ended up gaining 40 pounds part two is up should I break up with my boyfriend for fat shaming me? While he was in the Marines, I ended up gaining 40 pounds. I was super depressed and I didn't have a job and I missed him so much. One day he calls me and tells me that he's going to be home in two weeks. And that's when I knew I needed to start dieting again. But then part of me remembered that my boyfriend liked me when I was thicker and curvier. So what I did was I cut down on all the fried foods, but I still kept eating a lot during the day, which basically helped me maintain the weight instead of just losing weight. In preparation for his coming home, I went to get my hair done, my nails done. I even got a facial and I went to get wax down there, which of course is super painful. Painful. I even went to pick up some lingerie because nothing fit me at the time. I also cleaned my entire apartment and cooked him a really nice meal. To tell you, I even called his mother to ask her for the recipes. I was so excited to see him. He finally shows up to my house and I have everything ready. But as soon as he sees me, he asked me what happened. I said, what do you mean? Then all he said was, you're fat. At first I laughed because I thought he was joking. Then he says, what's so funny? It's like he was instantly angry. I told him I gained some weight and that I didn't bother losing it because he liked me curvy. That's when he said, yeah, I like you curvy, not fat. Then he told me I looked disgusting. Disgusting. Part two is up. Should I break up with my boyfriend for fat shaming me? After he told me I looked disgusting, I instantly broke out into tears. That's when he said, what did you expect? Then he said, I've been away for months. The last thing I want to come home to is a huge gut. But then I started crying more and he kind of softened up. He said that we could work out together and that he could help me lose the weight. He then pulls up his phone and shows me a picture of what he thinks I should look like. It was basically some random Instagram model that he followed, who was actually way skinnier than I was when he first met me. For the next week, he barely touched me, and he would make little snide remarks every time he saw me eating. For example, one night we decided to watch a movie at my place. I asked him if he wanted any snacks, and he said no. Then I told him I was probably going to make some popcorn, and if he wanted any. That's when he said I needed to watch what I was eating, especially at night, and that the last thing I needed was snacks during a movie. This obviously hurt my feelings, and of course, I started dieting again, but this time I was even more strict about it. I basically cut out every single thing that I like to eat, and I was only eating lean meats and salad, but very little portions. One night he invited his friends to come over to watch a football game. Instead of me having to cook, I offered to order them pizza, and they said yes. When the pizzas finally arrived, my boyfriend said in front of everybody, you don't get to eat any pizza because you still need to lose weight. I was so horrified, mortified, I wanted to literally crawl under a rock and die. His friends started laughing because they actually thought it was a joke. Then he says, no, you guys, I'm serious. She's so fat. I couldn't believe my boyfriend was putting me down like that in front of his friends. I gave him the silent treatment, but he really didn't care. After a full month, I started finally losing weight. It's been three months now, and I'm weighing 120 pounds. Now he's all over me and constantly tells me that I look beautiful. But I'm never going to forget how he treated me when I was heavier. I know that I should break up with him because of how he treated me, but I really do love him. And he's back to normal now. He loves me and touches me all the time. What should I do? 
Story time about how I dated my 30 year old teacher when I was only 15. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I said, I mean, Instagram. When I was 14, my dad got a new job and we moved to a different state. This was terrible for me because I left all of my friends, my family, and my entire life. And I knew that going to a new school at 14 years old was going to be really hard. Basically starting from scratch. I really resented my dad for it, although looking back on it, I was being a total brat. My dad's job was paying him $200,000 a year. And obviously I didn't recognize this as a good thing. My mom and dad were incredibly happy about this. We got a really big house with a pool, a tennis court, a gym, and my parents were the happiest I'd ever seen them. But this upset me even more. So me being a bratty teenager, I decided to make their lives impossible. I started staying out late even though I didn't have friends. And when I started making friends at this new school, I befriended the wrong ones. I even started drinking. My drama class was the only one that I ever looked forward to and really had fun in. And this is where I met the guy that would become my boyfriend. The thing was, he was actually really attractive. He felt like another student in the class and he made sure to be friends with every single student. Because I was new, he made an effort to get to really know me. Of course, looking back, I realized that this was G-R-O-O-M-I-N-G. No, I don't want to say the word. And then he would flirt with me and I would flirt back. Part two is up. Um, sometimes he would flirt with me and then I would flirt back But trust me, I never thought anything would actually happen And like I said, he was becoming my best friend He would give me all this advice and try to help me out But then right after he would say something flirty One day he saw me having lunch by myself and asked me if I wanted to have lunch with him in his classroom Of course I said yes, I mean I did have a crush on this guy As we're sitting in his classroom, we're just talking like friends And that's when he starts asking me about boys I told him I didn't like anyone and this clearly made him happy That's when he came to sit right next to me and told me that he had a confession to make That he actually had a crush on me And I got so happy I mean obviously I was a girl in high school who liked a guy and he liked her back. It was like the best news in the world. Then he told me that he wished he could kiss me, but he knew he couldn't in class. Then he said, why don't you come over to my house later? And I was like, okay, sure. Um, please don't ever do what I did. He picked me up a block away from school and we went to his house. And as you can imagine, things went down, literally. I fell in love with this man that very same day. For the next two weeks, I went to his house every day. Then he asked me to be his girlfriend and I said yes. This is when things started to get really scary. He became really jealous and controlling. Part three is up. Part three of how I dated my 30 year old teacher when I was only 15. Disclaimer, this is not my story time, I was sitting on Instagram. Once he asked me to be his girlfriend and I said yes, he totally changed. He became controlling and really jealous. Anytime he saw me talking to any boy in school, he would actually send the guy to detention. Eventually I told him that I didn't want to be his girlfriend anymore because of how controlling he was. That's when he told me that I needed to learn how to be an adult and that all adult relationships were like that. That women had to follow the men's rules and that if I wanted to be in a relationship with him, that's what I had to do. I was so naive that I actually believed him. So after that, I would try to avoid anything that would make him upset. Basically talking to any boys. Remember I said I had a group of friends? He told me I couldn't hang out with them anymore. He also wouldn't let me go to parties and anytime we were alone he would always try to kiss me even if I didn't want him to. In total we were probably officially boyfriend and girlfriend for only three weeks. I was getting so tired of it. I told him I didn't want to be with him and that I was not going to be in his class anymore. He tried to grab my arm but before he could I ran away from his class and after that he started begging me to get back with him. So here's what I did. I got another boyfriend a few weeks later and he basically left me alone after that. To this day I've never told anyone this story. Part of me feels guilty that I never said anything but I'm pretty sure he didn't do it to anyone else. After I broke up with him, he moved to a small island and worked at a hotel. I'm now 25 and married. Not even my husband knows. Should I tell him? Am I the asshole for cheating on my husband with his brother? Disclaimer, this is not my story time with sending me on Instagram. My husband and I have been married for three years, but my husband's always been very boring and kind of bland. The crazy thing is that I was the one that chased him and wanted to be in a relationship. He was 20 years old when we met and I met him through a friend. He was kind of charming when I first met him, but what I really liked about him was that he was a doctor, he owned two houses and a beach house, and he seemed like a really responsible guy. Before him, I only ever met broke guys, so when I met him, I was like, oh my god, this guy could be it. Oh, and the other thing is that he's extremely shy, so he was not about to make a move on me or even talk to me. So I convinced my friend to invite us all out to dinner so that I could get a chance to talk to him. Throughout the entire dinner, he was so shy, he basically avoided me. But then after the dinner, he told my friend that he thought I was cute. So I knew that I could win him. After that, we only saw each other at friends' parties. So on one occasion, I decided to just throw myself at him. I kissed him and I waited for his response. He said, thank you. He finally asked me out on a date and it was okay. I could definitely see me living my life with him. Obviously a boring one, but you know, whatever. We were engaged for six months and we started living together after that. He basically lets me do whatever I want with his money. And he also helped me open up my own business. So no, I'm not just living off of his dime, okay? Fast forward to quarantine, his brother came to live with us. And this is when things got really, really complicated. His brother is the total opposite, makes me laugh and we have so much fun together. Like, really good fun. Part two is up.
asshole for cheating on my husband with his brother. Disclaimer, this is not my story time with Cinnamon on Instagram. So his brother moved in with us during quarantine. And as soon as he moved in, I was finally laughing and having fun. Like I said, my husband was really boring and shy. So you can imagine, like, even in bed, he was super boring. Like, he never wanted to do it. And if I ever asked him to, he would just say he was tired. So I got really sick of that. When his brother came to live with us, he would make jokes, we would laugh. He basically made me feel alive again. Here's how things went down with him. My husband loves to go golfing with his golfing buddies. So he would leave every single day for like two to three hours just to do that. So I was pretty much all by myself all day. He would also spend a lot of time where he worked at a hospital. On the other hand, his brother was home all the time. He and I would watch movies. He even started helping me out with my online business. And soon we became really good friends. I would tell him everything. I would even complain about how boring his brother was. One night we decided to have pizza and wine. And between us, we both had three bottles. Throughout the movie, we kept laughing. And every time I would just get closer and closer to him. Eventually I was sitting right next to him. That's when we look at each other and we just started macking on. It was uncontrollable passion and I didn't know how to stop. And we ended up doing it. Part three is up. Am I the asshole for cheating on my husband with his brother? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. As we were making out on the couch, I just kept thinking how much better my life would be with him. As opposed to his boring brother, one thing led to another and we ended up doing it. And it was magical. And then every single day after that, we would kind of just smile at each other. When my husband was at home, he would steal kisses from me. If I was sitting on a chair, he would come by and quickly tickle my shoulder. I was living like a full-on romance novel. Of course, my boring husband didn't even notice. I was suddenly happy all the time. One day, I asked my husband if he had noticed the change in me. And he said, you're being silly. What are you talking about? And right there, that confirmed that my husband didn't even care that I was suddenly happier. He wasn't even bothering to ask why. By the way, his brother was staying with us until he found his own house. And guess what? He ended up moving in two houses away from ours. By the way, he also owns his own businesses, so he's really wealthy. He's tried to convince me to leave his brother, but I don't know. Sometimes I think my husband doesn't really like women, but I'm not sure. I know you guys will think it's easy to just get a divorce, but I don't want to break his heart either. But at the same time, I want to be happy too. What should I do? Help. Story time about how I married my father. Disclaimer, this is not my story time and trigger warning for this. My mom and dad got pregnant with me when they were only 16. They were both young and irresponsible. My mom wanted to keep me, but my dad didn't. My dad basically broke up with my mom and told her that if she wanted to have me, she would have to do it on her own. So my mom did. Luckily, my grandma helped her out a lot and she was able to stay in school. As a baby, my dad would visit me every now and then, but he wasn't really involved in my life as far as my mom says. Here's a little backstory on my dad. My dad grew up in a really strict family and he was expected to graduate and become a doctor. So that's pretty much exactly what he did. During the time that he was in college, he really didn't come see my mom or I, but of course my mom and him kept in contact. When my dad, or should I say husband, graduated from medical school, he finally got married. And of course this was hard for my mom because she thought eventually they would get back together. By the time my dad remarried, I was about 12 years old. I didn't have a relationship with him at the time and it didn't bother me. I was so busy with friends in school, I never really thought about him. Not until I turned 14. This is when things started changing and I told my mom that I really wanted to talk to my dad. So he and I started talking on the phone and eventually he came to visit me. But things started changing when I turned 19. He actually ended up getting a divorce and he and I would spend more and more time together alone. Part two is a story time about how I married my father. Disclaimer, this is not my story time and trigger warning for this. When I turned 19 is when my dad and I started spending more time together alone. Or should I say my husband? Keep in mind, I really didn't have a relationship during my teen years. We only spoke on the phone a few times and he would visit every now and then, but not a lot. When I turned 19, I was living in college and I was closer to my dad. So I decided to reach out to him and ask him if he wanted to have dinners every now and then. And he said yes. The first time we went out to dinner, we actually had a lot of fun. And and it really didn't feel like I was hanging out with my dad. It was more like I was hanging out with a friend. We just didn't have that father-daughter dynamic. We would meet up almost every single weekend and our relationship was actually very friendly. We would make each other laugh and talk about everything. And this is when we realized that we had a lot in common. Eventually he asked me if I was dating anyone and I told him I wasn't. When I got home, I started realizing that I wasn't thinking about my dad like a dad. I was thinking about him like a man. So the next time I saw him, I decided to tell him that. And that's when he told me that he didn't see me like a daughter either. It took a lot of courage for me to tell him this. So that's when things started to really change between us. Every time we would hang out after that, it was more like a date. We started getting to know each other and he would hold my hand every now and then. And a few weeks later, we had our first kiss. Part three is up. Story time about how I married my father. Disclaimers is not my story time and trigger warning for this. After our first kiss, everything changed. We didn't think of each other as father-daughter. And of course, our relationship began to get more serious. And one thing we kept discussing was, should we tell our family or should we just keep it secret? So we kept it secret for almost a full year. I told my mom that I was dating someone, but I wouldn't tell her who it was. Also a little side note, my mom and dad didn't have any contact between them at this time. My mom was actually married to someone else and they were very happy. But for me, it was getting to the point where I needed to tell somebody. Because yes, part of me felt that this was really wrong 
wrong, but the other part of me felt that it was just right. I had never met anybody like him before. So I decided to tell my grandma, and she nearly had a heart attack. She called my mom right away and told her the truth. That's when my mom came over and we talked for a few hours. I explained to them everything and they still didn't agree with me. My mom called my dad and they got into an epic fight. I was totally expecting this, but it really hurt. My mom and grandma were totally against the relationship. That's when they told me that they would never speak to me again if I kept the relationship going. A few months later, we decided to get married privately. And I didn't tell my mom. She actually found out through my best friend who was totally against our relationship as well. And she pretty much tells my mom everything I tell her. It's been two years since we got married and part of me still feels guilty and like I did something really wrong. But now it's getting even worse because I actually met someone who's my age and is not related to me. But I don't have the heart to break up with my husband slash dad. I told my mom about this new guy and she really wants me to get a divorce. I feel like all along I was just looking for the love of a man because I didn't get that from my dad. Now that I'm seeing someone else, I'm realizing how wrong what I did was. But I don't want to break my dad slash husband's heart. How can I fix this? What should I do? How can you ever know what someone's true intentions are? Alice was the babysitter of a young girl with a severe incurable illness. They had developed a strong bond. Alice was almost like a sister to her and her only close friend. But once the young girl's illness got worse and she had to be taken off of life support, the mother didn't eat or sleep for days. The father was inconsolable until one day the father called Alice over. He said that they needed some help to get their daughter's room remodeled. He said that her mother couldn't stand to look at it anymore. Every night before bed, they could hear their dead daughter's cries coming from her old room. But things became quickly even more terrifying. They went to the young girl's room and said that they had to knock a wall down in order to remodel it. So together, all three of them got to work. Then the dad asked if they needed some water. Alice said sure, so the parents went to go get it. But as soon as they came back, Alice was shocked. They were wearing gas masks. They sprayed a substance into Alice's face and she blacked out. But when she woke up, the hole in the wall that she had knocked down was covered in bricks entirely. The door and the window were also bricked up. She began banging on the wall, screaming for help. And from the other side, she heard the faint voice of the dead girl's parents say, we're sorry, but she needs you forever. So I had just been dress coded for having a singular rip on my knee, right? And uh, the vice principal and the assistant teacher harassing me the whole time. They make me change in a room with cement walls and dirt floors. They lock me in there, make me change. And they give me pants from the lost and found that are two sizes too small and dirty, right? So the teacher's walking me back to my class. She's harassing me the whole time, making fun of me. And I get back to class and I'm just crying because I'm so humiliated. Um, they really just like brought me down. So my teacher comes up to me and she's like, what's wrong? Like what happened? Why'd they take you down to the office? What took so long? And I tell her the story and I like tell the class the story and nobody believes me. They're like, well, some of the students did. They were like, what really? Like, that's crazy. But the teacher was like, I'm not buying it. Like you're lying to me. And I was like, yeah, I wouldn't believe myself either. Like, that's crazy. Right? So at the end of the day, I go down to the office and I ask for my pants back. And they said, no, we don't want you wearing those pants again. So I was like, mm, okay, I'll go back another day.
Can you solve this mystery? This is the story about the murder of a group of kids that went to the same school. But things are not as simple as they seem. Someone is hiding something. And all the clues to what really happened are hidden in what I'm about to say. After the tragic murders of these boys, they had to each be buried in closed caskets because their bodies were so badly beaten. But someone noticed something strange at the funeral. He was a friend of one of the boys' parents and he saw an elderly woman sitting alone, someone that he didn't recognize. When the funeral was over, she quietly went over to each headstone with a smile and placed a clover next to each one. Then she said a silent prayer. He thought she must be one of the dead boy's grandmas. He asked her, why did you place a clover on their grave? She replied, it's a happy flower. It brings good luck. You see, my grandson died too, but it was a different incident. He was bullied for a long time and one day he couldn't take it anymore. He hung himself in the school bathroom. The elderly woman began crying and left. He felt bad for her, but something felt off. That night, he decided to Google what clovers mean. It said that they were the symbol for revenge. What really happened here? Can you solve this mystery?